ഓക്കെ ഓക്കെ members are joining sir there is sir they are joining sir they are joining uh students are joining 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 sir they are joining the youtube okay okay idhil le sir no ஒரு <laughs> 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 Yeah, 
அஜெண்ட Uh, you need to give welcome, welcome address, address by uh, principal of rnkcet then guest okay. introduction by vijay raja uh, in aids department then i'll invite the guest to security after company session personal session first sir
சார் சார் அட்மிட் பண்ணலாமா சார் அபிஷேக் சார் அட்மிட் பண்ணலாம் சார் இல்ல வந்து ஜாயின் பண்ண சொல்றேன் சார் அவர் ஜாயின் பண்றாரு சார் குட் மார்னிங் சார் அபிஷேக் சார் குட் மார்னிங் ஒன்னால் டெக்டாக் சீரீஸ் ஃபோர் ப்ரொவைடட் பை மிஸ்டர் அபிஷேக் சார் இந்த டாபிக் ஆஃப் சைபர் செக்யூரிட்டி ஐ வாம் வெல்கம் யூ ஆல் ஃபார் த ஒண்டர்ஃபுல் மார்னிங் டு அட்டன் த சைபர் செக்யூரிட்டி லேட்டஸ்ட் ட்ரெண்ட் இட்ஸ் ரோல் இன் பாசஸ் இவால்விங் டெக்னாலஜி லேண்ட்ஸ்கேப் பை அபிஷேக் சிங்வி அக்கௌண்ட் டைரக்டர் பி டி ஹாங்காங் நவ் ஐ கால் அப் ஆன் அவர் respected principal sir to give vote of uh, uh, welcome at us for this event welcome okay. sir thank you sir uh, respected uh, mr special and chief of today's program mr abhishek singhvi account director anga the hod of uh, ads department dr prasad lakshmi கோஆர்டினேட் தி ப்ரோகிராம் ப்ரொஃபஸர் விஜயராஜா மேடம் கற்பகம் ஃபேக்கல்டி மெம்பர்ஸ் அண்ட் பார்ட்டிசிபன்ட்ஸ் மை டியர் ஸ்டூடெண்ட்ஸ் வெரி குட் மார்னிங் டு ஆல் ஆஃப் யூ அட் த அவுட் செட் ஐ லைக் டு தேங்க் தி ஆர்கனைஸர் ஆஃப் திஸ் ப்ரோகிராம் ஃபார் கிவிங் திஸ் வண்டர்ஃபுல் ஆப்பர்ச்சுனிட்டி டு டெலிவர் தி வெல்கம் அட்ரஸ் ஆர் திஸ் டெக் சீரீஸ் ப்ரோக்ராம் ஆஃப் நம்பர் ஃபோர் my dear members our management especially our chairman and our vice chairman are encouraging and supporting to organizing this type of program for the benefit of our faculty member and students every week our group of institution alternately we are organizing this program this week uh, for our turn we are organizing the generic uh, tech talk series about about four on the topic of cyber security let us trends and its role in fast evolving technology landscape and it be delivered by mr abhishek uh, sanghvi and look up of the management the faculty members and uh, the entire uh, rmk family we welcome our resource person mr abhishek uh, sanghvi welcome sir and uh, on In the cup of uh, the faculty and students, uh, I call her to welcome the HOD of uh, AADS, Dr. Purusha Lachmi, for taking effort uh, for arranging this program. I welcome Adam. And I welcome the coordinator, Dr. Vijay Raja, who is also involved uh, for organizing this type of program and supporting the end of the department. I welcome Dr. Vijay Raja. Welcome, sir. and i welcome uh, madam karpakam the assistant professor of ad school college and welcome other faculty members and participants our students will uh, uh, for welcome you all for this program once again i welcome every one of uh, today's participants thank you thank you anand sir sir thank you sir thank you sir ah uh, uh, now it's my privilege to introduce our uh, valuable resource person mr abhishek singhi mr abhishek singhi done his bta from iit mumbai and executive mba from manchester business school he has worked with customers in financial industry telecom services based uh, in sweden germany belgium india us uk and hong kong Abhishek uh, Singhvi is having 25 plus years 
continuous experiments. The dependency is worldwide across business verticals, providing them technical advisory, sales proportion, service delivery, and support services. He works closely with the external stakeholders with the focus on sales and service excellence while managing large deals covering operation support. He works in digital transformation, customer experience, and integration of customers' infrastructure. His expertise lies in leading multicultural technology teams across geographies in a globally distributed agile service delivery model with emphasis on executive development and completion with the project. He has very good understanding of diverse technology across languages, application stacks, and security products, and cloud service providers. Uh, now, I call upon uh, uh, Mr. Abhijay Singh, sir, to take over the session, sir. Welcome, Mr. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vijay, for a uh, quick introduction. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ramar. Thank you, Mrs. Lakshmi for giving this opportunity. And uh, I hope the students on the call would uh, take away good learnings from here. So without spending any more time, I will quickly move on to the topic. Uh, I have a short presentation here, so I will quickly share that. Uh, so just bear with me. Uh, so you can see my screen, right, Mr. Vijay? OK, and I'm audible here. Okay, thank you. So, so yeah. So basically, as uh, Mr. Vijay said, so I'll talk about cybersecurity. Yeah. So I think this is a very upcoming niche area and very very critical for the organizations and for also the users like us, right? So, so I'll touch upon some of the areas why why it's so important. So here is the agenda of what I'll cover, right? So there's a lot changing on the technology front, right? So and cybersecurity actually lies in the heart of most of those uh, cutting edge stuff. So I'll quickly touch upon what are the key trends and where does cybersecurity fit in. Then the key question that you guys might have in mind, right? Why, why are we having this session, right? What is cybersecurity? Why it's so important, right? So I have some statistics to talk about. And I think uh, living in this connected world, you could very well relate once I show you some data points that you are also part of this uh, cybersecurity domain as a consumer, right? Uh, and then... Uh, Moving on, I'll talk about different stages uh, of cyber defense. How do we enable it? How does the organization do it today? Then what are those various domains? What kind of security is, uh, is applicable in the organizations? What kind of attacks are happening today? Because why do we need this security? Is because there is a potential risk, potential attack, which is happening on the ground. Uh, so I'll touch upon some of those. I'll give you some examples, right, so that you can relate. Uh, real life examples and then what are those actions that needs to be taken and it's not just about organization it could be relevant for the university it could be relevant for the you as a user mobile user to be very specific right so so we'll touch upon then i'll give you a very brief overview of what are the who are the cutting edge companies in this right so if you've not heard about uh, the cyber security specific uh, domain a lot there are a few companies which are doing pretty well and they are actually market leaders so i'll just leave you with some of those names and towards the end, I'll talk about some challenges and, in fact, some opportunities, right? So, so that will be your key takeaway at the end, like what do you want to do after this session, right, in this phase. So that's, that's the objective of this session, and I hope uh, you get some insights and some uh, kind of inclination to learn more about this after this session, right? So, so moving on, uh, so I'll first touch upon the key trends. So if you see, right, uh, like you're already having these tech series, right, I'm sure some of these are getting covered, may, might get covered down the line. So some of these like generative AI, for example, right? It's it's the buzzword, right? So AI is kind of, uh, we are living with AI right now and it's kind of intrude in our life more and more as we progress, right? So now there's, if we if I put the cybersecurity aspect to it, right? So it has a mutual relationship, right? Cybersecurity defenses need AI. And at the same time, to kind of have a secure AI setup, we need cybersecurity, right? So there's a mutual relationship here. Similarly, you have cloud computing. You have heard about Microsoft Azure Cloud. You might have heard about AWS, Google Cloud. So all of them open on the internet, exposed to the risk, and then cybersecurity is a key element of all these cloud infrastructure, right? And if you look at blockchain, 
some of you might have heard about cryptocurrency bitcoins all of those are kind of based on a blockchain platform and then cyber security is again a very very key element here again here is a mutual mutual uh, element here on cyber security which i'll cover internet of things where everything is now getting connected sitting at home you can open the door or sitting in university or college or office you can open uh, in activate your refrigerator through wi-fi or you can open the doors of the house so so all that connected stuff happening through internet through the network and that's where we need to make it secure so so in short what i'm trying to bring in here is there are multiple things happening in the technology landscape right and then cyber security is at the core of it it's like an horizontal which is relevant for all of those areas like look at remote working right post covid so much is happening remotely people are connecting look at this session right you're connecting from wherever you are right so so then all the traffic is flowing through the internet and then it's important that we kind of secure it and it's not again individual stuff right you're using zoom so zoom is already giving you that protection but there is lot happening in the back end which they are doing to make this possible for for all of us right so moving from the trend right so now i'll elaborate a bit more around the cyber security right so what what's happening in this space why we need this right so in in short right cyber attacks right so cyber attacks are nothing but it's of it's the ability of these uh uh hackers right who can kind of damage or destroy the business they can cause a uh, lot of losses to the businesses to the victims and it may just kill them as well in the sense that some of the organization may not come up again they may lose their reputation right so i'll give you some quick statistics of what kind of uh, risk we have what is happening in the market right so so here you look at some of the data right so 97% of organization right so when i say organization i'm talking about companies uh, which are either in banking manufacturing all the domains right so there's continuous increase in the cyber threats right so there is a continuous continuous increase then 63% of businesses are suffering from data breach right so data breach is primarily where you are the data is flowing through uh, internet and somebody is intercepting and then you lose that data or somebody is actually hacked into your remote desktop laptop which you are using today and they are able to get into your organization's uh, network and fetch the data right so so that's quite prevalent right especially after covid uh, there is an 80% increase in phishing attacks right so i'll i'll explain more about this word phishing but in simple terms as the name says phishing right so basically look at it as a bait right so you are a bait and then the hackers or the attackers are kind of phishing with you right so you kind of take the bait and you kind of get uh, so you are a fish who takes that bait whatever they give right so i'll elaborate a bit more around that but there's a constant increase so you'll get an email you'll get something which is very attractive and then you click on a link in your mobile or in your email and suddenly your your network or your uh, device uh, gets uh, hacked right then 94% are coming through emails so like i just said right so we are all very well connected through emails today and emails are flowing through with very very uh, some attachments right the executable files sometimes they are coming with a very critical or i would say very important message some are kind of tempting you to click on some link so that you can make some money some are telling you to take some action otherwise you may lose some connectivity or you may lose some uh, important information so all those are kind of happening very often not just as individual but in the organization and uh, similarly there is a 50% jump on the mobile device so this is the one i was referring to where each one of us actually needs to be on alert and each one of us actually are are at risk right and it's not just us uh, it's it's across the board like maybe somebody in your family might have faced some of this similar stuff somebody in your uh, in your company in your office and so it's very 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 prevalent and uh, so i'll touch upon some of these areas so the intent of this slide is more about create some interest on why we are talking about this topic right and then if you look at the cost impact for the company right so this is all about the company right so when you lose data right when somebody gives steals your data as a company right like you are a contact center you have lot of data of the customers phone number email address and somebody just steals it from you and then there is a cost because you are kind of in breach of regulation government laws and also you have to pay some cost so this is an average cost of doing having that data breach right then you see the word next one is the ransomware right so there is there is another kind of attack which is very very prevalent which is called ransomware uh, what it means is somebody will attack uh control your systems and then ask for money right ransom only then they will release your data 
or your systems without which the organization or the companies can't do anything so there is a lot happening around that again here you get into a situation where you have no other option but to pay because otherwise your organization will just collapse so so there is a lot happening in that space and then we talk about the losses uh, due to email compromises so this again cuts across the first two elements so a lot of it is happening via emails people are kind of getting compromised and it's all about anybody in the organization right the employees get compromised the individual users get compromised and uh, even the senior management gets compromised and all that is at a cumulative level kind of having an impact of 2.7 billion us right in 2022 right including small big organization everyone so so in short right so there is there is a lot happening which requires attention right lot of proactive measures so this is all about reactive right so this is when everything has happened the damage is done so what we'll talk about now is what are the various levels of defense right so that you don't get into this situation right so you try as much as possible not to fall into this situation so moving on to the next slide right so what are the various stages of defense right so so i'll give you a small simple analogy before i i jump into the uh, specifics of cyber security so when you build a house someone builds a house you you build a security around it when i say that you build kind of uh, the doors the locks you have uh, windows you have uh, multiple gates right so, so so you kind of put locks so this is basically a protection right so this is basically a protecting anybody getting into a house theft burglary right none of that happens so you're doing that defense right protection it's a preventive measure now in spite of doing all this you also put a cctv right sometimes you put some cameras to detect if something is going wrong so that in case somebody is trying to plan something you get hold of it up front or in case something happens you have something to go back and look at so this is kind of a detection mechanism you are putting in your house now beyond that right so nobody can be 100 100% sure that if i build all of this infrastructure all the locks and the window locks and secure locks and uh, multiple levels of uh, uh, defense uh, security somebody may still breach in so what if that happens right so that's your next step which is called as my response right so my response is immediately what i do is i build the next level of defense where i'll contain the movement of a of a burglar right so if he enters into it i have some critical stuff some money some jewelry i put it in a locker which is under another lock right so you really can't so it's basically it's next level of defense that you put in right so that's the so that's the containment of what's happening if somebody still gets into the house he's still contained into an area where you have minimum impact right and then you have a response mechanism where you may have a buzzer somebody will uh, automatic buzzer which might click in and then you get kind of alerted and then you can call the police so there is a process which you may enable right and then once all of that has happened let's say worst case somebody is burst in right so you may go and look at how i can recover you go to the police you report it and then you may want to improve your locks and all the all the defense mechanism you may want to review right so why i'm giving this example is this is exactly how you need to look at the cyber security the defense from an organization perspective right so you have different levels you have a threat protection up front this is a preventive measure maybe it's not 100% so you have to make sure if if it's breached you have some level of defense when you have some level of defense that means it is contained not that everybody can enter anywhere if your laptop for example gets a virus in a company let's say in the university it immediately kind of get contained that the impact of it remains within the laptop it doesn't go to the entire university network for example or the office network right so these are so that's the next level of containment or the re immediate response to that right and the next level will be the recovery process if your data is lost how do you do like the backup or what are the various options you have so these are the various stages which i was referring to so so if you look at from a cyber security right so the key aim is to protect all these devices uh sensitive data financial information right from all these kind of attacks so i'll talk about different types of attack like the virus and ransomware but at this moment it's more about how do you how do you take measures or what are the various stages where you can restrict an access into your environment right so i talked about protection detection response recovery right so these are various levels right and the good part is uh, or the interesting point here is the first one the one at the bottom is probably the least expensive the recovery probably is the most expensive right so especially if it's reactive i showed you some data right something goes wrong and then you end up paying a lot because you are then stuck right but if you can invest up front you can avoid some of these things then that's the ideal scenario right now on the right and left you see those horizontal bars so these are basically 
certain processes which exist in an organization whenever there is something happening right they have to follow those processes those controls and these are those are upfront built right so you are ready to look into each of these areas whenever wherever it happens right you have tools systems so i talked about right there's some market leaders who will provide you some defense tools you can put those tools like for example antivirus in simple terms right in your laptop so that's one of the sys tools right so you have put it there so it will constantly monitor it will upgrade itself so that if there's any new attack or new virus coming in it can enable itself to protect from it right so that all is a continuous process which is happening so there's typically organization will have more and more are now having actually not all of them have it a separate it security department right so they will focus on focus on the security security of the systems and data so data is another key element which uh, i'll cover uh, a, in some part later on right so they, so that's the key element of security right data and systems right and then everything aligns or falls around that so so in case anyone has questions right please note it down and we can cover it up later uh, right so I, i'll just keep the floor right now uh, so moving on right so there are different types of security domains okay so so i'll just kind of for your benefit i'll show you what i'm talking about right so let me give you an example cloud security right so cloud security you know about google amazon azure if you've heard about right so they are all on the internet so all these cloud infrastructure when i when somebody some company is connecting right they need to be secured connectivity otherwise they can be they they may lose data they may lose uh, they may lose some access right so similarly the network and infrastructure all the resources servers desktops laptops right need to be protected so that's kind of protecting protecting your network and infrastructure then the other element is application right so some of you might be into coding right writing codes so when you write an application you always have a login right and even if you look at the zoom right sometimes you will have a meeting id right so this is where there is an application where you are controlling the access right so that not everybody can act, enter into it so there is an authorized access with authorized access with certain roles right you can't do everything as well even if you can enter so so those are the things which fall under the domain of application security right similarly if you talk about application security you need to use the right version of code right so if you're into object oriented programming some of you might have written some java code you need to use the right jdk version or if you are using some uh, devops tool right so you need to make sure that devops tool is uh, secure otherwise you may lose your code to somebody or somebody can just put some virus in your code and then it can impact everybody else right so so all those secure mechanisms are required similarly mobile security so this is a very very significant thing today right protecting your mobile device because device is like today almost everyone is carrying right so so it is less of an organization it's more of an individual issue right and why organizations are impacted today because a lot of employee like myself right i will have my own mobile where i can have access to company information so if my mobile is not secure there's a possibility that my there might be a breach into my company's uh, data because of my uh, virus or some issue in my mobile right so mobile security is quite important today and as an individual user right maybe your parents your friends who are using mobiles or you yourself right you need to upgrade right so you get this new uh, installation if you are an iphone or a samsung or uh, huawei or whatever right so you will get an upgrade on your device that's primarily to secure your mobile from anything else anything new any new risk that have come up right so that's called a mobile security so there again you have multiple tools which will be provided by the security providers right and then the last one is information security which is as i mean in other words it's the data security right so so there's lot of importance of data you might have heard right data is the new oil right so the, the data is something which is so so important today right because you can you can make use of this data to reach out to customers you can expand your business you can connect to social media right so so that's one part which is the customer or your employee data right then the other element is lot of your business confidential information financial data right all of that is bound by regulations by the government right so you cannot just let, let that data be taken away by anyone right so you need to follow certain guidelines at an organization level right so there are some important voice recordings so which is where the deals are happening right so in the large organization they, they will do some mna or they will do some uh, large uh, stock market trading or something which is recorded right so they all of that information is quite critical for for the organization to secure because if you lose that you can again be held for from multiple aspects right one is 
that can be misused to reach out by your competitor. It can be misused to uh, kind of uh, spoil your reputation as an organization. It can be used to spoil uh, uh, or kind of uh, irritate or impact the individual customers, right? So all that is something which is critical. And there are, again, some guidelines around it, which needs to be followed by individual uh, organization, right? So moving on, uh, so these are various aspects of what kind of security that applies here. So if you look at the next level, right, we talk about what kind of attacks that can happen, right? So this is very interesting because this is something you would, in some forms, you might experience knowingly, unknowingly. And uh, at an organization level, you might not be in a company today, but you might read on internet. You might be impacted party because you are a customer of that organization, right? So I'll cover some of those key special uh, key attack types, right? And I might try to cover some examples here as well for your benefit. So the first one is phishing, right? So like I said, right, you are a fish, right? So they will give you a bait, right? So I don't know if you have experience, but I can tell you I have my relatives in India who have seen this happening, right? So they will get an email uh, or a call and somebody will say, oh, there's a, you will, you have a electric electricity bill pending and you must pay today or you will be losing the connection and we'll send you a, a phone number and we'll give you you we give you an OTP and you just give us that and all that, right? So so that's like a phishing, right? Actually, it's wishing. So wishing is basically when you get a voice call from somebody. So that is where you are now being given a bait that if you don't do this, you will be impacted, you lose the connection. And then it's so authentic, you might just buy it and then you end up giving your OTP and the impact is you may lose money, right? So that's that's a small scale thing, but this is happening. The volume is high, right? So small scale with so many customers, if it happens, the, the attacker is making a lot of money. So phishing is uh, is a very common phenomena, which is at organization level, at individual level as well. The second one, similar to is called whaling, right? So whaling is more about when the large, the senior management of a company is reached out. So it's like whale, as you know, right? Whale is a big fish. So basically whaling is like, and they reach out to a big fish in organization and that big fish takes the bait and then there's an impact, right? So that's kind of fishing, right? And then you also have something called ransomware. I touched upon it. So the way it works is you might get an email or you might have a uh, some kind of applications which are exposed to security risk and somebody kind of figures it out, right? Some group and then they enter into your environment and take control of all your system, software, everything. Right. So then the organization cannot do anything. So the company is like blocked their entire data, entire process. What happens then is if you are a customer of that organization, you will not be able to do anything. Right. So let's say let's say it's an insurance company, for example, it has happened recently with an insurance company. So then you can't process their claims because the insurance company, all the systems are locked. So then these hackers will reach out to the organization management and they'll ask for money, which is called as ransom. And that's what it is called. So it's nothing but a software but software which is intended to get some ransom, right? So, and then you never know, you need to negotiate and then it takes time. You you may lose customers because I may not come to you again because you've lost your reputation. So that's kind of a ransomware attack, right? So you may read about it in the news, in the internet, right? Some are very small scale, some are large scale with very big organizations. The other one is malware. So malware is a smaller scale of ransomware in the sense they will just infect your computer, maybe limited systems right a department is impacted again it's a software but a software which contains like a bad it's a bad software in the sense it works well but the intention is bad behind that so so that's where you talk about virus right so virus is small example of that where you say a virus comes into your laptop and then whoever laptop who all the laptops that are connected to your network will also get infected so there's a malware in your system you can't do anything and that can happen in your mobile as well right the next one is DDoS, right? So DDoS is, uh, again, a kind of a recent uh, phenomena, especially with more and more connectivity happening, right? So it's a denial of service attack. What happens then is today, for example, we are talking about you're connecting to a banking site, right? And you're doing your transactions and somebody will just put a lot of traffic on that internet, which takes you to the bank, right? And then everything will stop because there's not enough bandwidth beyond that, right? So, so basically, you know, right? So the network, has a limited bandwidth, so you use that. But if somebody chokes it, then all other services are blocked, and then they will not release that network. So you're stuck until you maybe the organization may have to pay something, right? So there'll always something 
behind where they have a demand and you have to manage it, right? And that's where there's a financial impact of such things. So the DDoS att if attack, it's quite prevalent, right? So Google, AWS, Microsoft, all of them have faced this kind of attack in the last few years, right? And then they, so they may have their own tools to come out of it, or they may have to give up and get the bandwidth release. So there's different ways of handling this, right? So I, I'll cover also like, how do you react? What all can you do when such things happen, right? So the third one is, the next one is the data breach, right? So the data breach is uh, more about how do I get access to my organization's uh, like personal information, right? Of employees, right? It could be the emails, it could be about the customers, right? If you're a contact center, if you're a bank, and then these guys, once they get the data, they can sell it to somebody else who can use it for other purposes, right? So this is an example of data breach, which again, is quite prevalent because sometimes you don't understand what's happening. You think it's a genuine request and you give it to somebody, right? And then, then they misuse that data, right? So the other one is internal threat. So, so what I mentioned so far are mostly the external threats in the sense somebody from outside is doing it, right? And it's directly coming on the system. The internal threat is when an employee is getting engaged. Again, it's not intentional, right? It may not be most of the time, it's accidental, but he doesn't understand what's happening, right? He's just doing his job. And in that process, he actually kind of puts the organization at risk, right? So that's an internal threat. Why does it happen? Because he's not trained enough. He's not aware of what all what is phishing. So eventually, it's one of those things, right? He might get phished or he might get a uh, attack uh, or a request where he end up giving some data and all, but he doesn't understand because he's not aware of such things, right? So, so that's where one of the mitigation action you'll see later on is about training the employees, right? Making them aware of what can go wrong. So, and the last one is social engineering tools. So, which is more about the social media stuff, right? So this is more to the end user, all of us, right? Uh, whoever uh, is on the internet, the various channels where you will get lured into it, you might get just an email. Somebody will say, okay, if you click on this and register, I'll give you X amount of money. Or if you register on this, you'll get a free deal, right? Other thing which is happening is uh, QR code, right? So nowadays it's again coming out, right? Recent phenomena. There's a lot of action hap happens through QR code where you scan your QR code and then uh, you pay, right? For example, or you go to a website or you, right? So sometimes uh, these QR codes might have virus. So again, you need to be careful uh, not kind of scanning all kind of QR code at any time, right? So so these are this is again a new phenomenon I'm referring to. And then that's the challenge here in cybersecurity, right? So these attackers are smarter than you, right? So they are outplaying you all the time. So when you learn one thing, they will move into the second one. And they're studying all the data and they, they, they're kind of kind of ahead in the game, right? So, and that's a big challenge for the organizations as well to be constantly up to the speed and uh, kind of simulate what they what might happen, right? So, so these are various attack types which uh, are uh, relevant here, right? Uh, so moving on is the risk mitigation. So what all can I do when such a things happen, right? So, so I'll, I'll quickly cover some of the elements which some I've already mentioned uh, while talking about uh, the attacks. So first one example is user awareness training, right? So when I say user, it's basically the employee, right? If it's an organization, it could be customer, right? So quite often you get an email from the bank, right? So if you get a call from somebody, don't do this unless it's an authenticated one because some of these things happen in a very subtle way, right? So they will use a very, very similar email address, right? They may not use the exact email address, but it's not visible to uh, obvious to you unless you really go to it, right? Some emails will have spelling mistakes, right? But what you focus on is the crux, right? So somebody from an Im immigration department calls, right? Let's say I'm in Hong Kong and somebody calls, right? So so then I need to be careful what information being asked for, right? So so it again, it's not very common, but it does happen sometimes. So you just need to be alert, right? And sometimes the targets are the vulnerable good, uh, vulnerable people, right? Senior citizens, for example, right? So, but in the in the context of user awareness, it's more about employees, right? What tools are there in the system? What processes? Let's say you get a spam email. What should I do next? I should report to a department within the organization who will then take the next action. And uh, similarly, if I actually click something wrong, I should immediately inform my senior management and not not kind of just sit on it and so that they can take the next actions, right? So so that's about making you aware of what all can happen and if it at all happens, what should you what you should do, right? So that's 
one of the key element the other one is incident response and recovery so i refer to that right it's it's more overarching in terms of you need to respond and uh, do things when something goes wrong but it should not be it should not be uh, ad hoc right so you have some you should have a process and plan in place so that so basically you're anticipating something so that when something happens you have a rule book to play with okay i do x i do y i do z right so that's the action for the employees if there's something happens right similarly you have vulnerability risk management so this is about see you okay so if you have an organization right you will have a lot of servers you will have network infrastructure you will have application so there is a need to con- continuously look at what all versions of softwares are there what kind of applications are running and then you need to assess if there is a new vulnerability so what is vulnerability vulnerability is a weakness in the application right so if something goes wrong it can be attacked from outside or if somebody can make use of it right and it's a publicly known uh, uh, gap right on the security so once you know that you need to fix it most of the time there will be a fix for it uh, but you need to implement it you need to do it and before that you need to know about it right so this is again, again proactive measure you keep a track of it constantly right the other one is user identity access management so i mentioned about like like you would be experiencing this a lot right this uh, especially connecting to your financial systems banks you need to use uh, multiple factor authentication right you put a password then you have to put an otp right and then nowadays some uh, application demand another app like uh, authenticator right you need to set it up so that you get a special password from there and then you use that to log into another application right so so that is all about controlling who is accessing and is the authorized one and it's not just one level which is password because password may get hacked right so you have multiple levels of authentication and that's why it is called multi factor authentication right similarly you have uh, things around ransomware containment how do you make sure you keep the data uh, within the impact within a limited domain right similarly you need to look at how i can use the ai so if you remember i mentioned there is a mutual relationship right so ai tools need cyber security right so that they are not misused at the same time cyber security can leverage the ai capability so you can kind of create there's a lot of data in the system right so if something wrong is happening right sometimes it is planned so you can look at the data and create insights you can create some dashboard and see okay there's a pattern here something is not right or something has changed in last few days maybe something else is cooking up right so it's a correlation part of it where you see okay so there is something i should kind of keep a watch on and then maybe take some actions uh, up front right similarly critical assets protection so this is like an example of house i gave right if you have wealth jewelry money you have an additional protection there right so you put it in locker so similar to that you may want to do an additional protection levels there uh, and, and then uh, the important one is disaster recovery and business continuity so this is a very important one uh, so what happens here is if let's say you are compromised something has happened right so you need to see how do i recover quickly right and how can i ensure a continuity of my business right so this again requires investment right it it is something you need to plan up front so that it's like an insurance premium right it may not happen ever but you may need to be prepared for it so to give an example right in during covid right so people had to work from home right so there was a need to develop some recovery disaster as st- setups because uh, some of the centers were in a country where you had bigger impact of covid so these disaster recovery centers those who had it up front could survive much easy who, who didn't have they really had to make one during the during the covid so it was very difficult right but then like i said it's like a premium they never used it in the past but whoever had it was at an advantage at that time right so to give an example here right so recently a uh, few week last month actually the indian stock market right so they did a dry run on Mar- in march right in on a saturday right for disaster recovery so that is again part of one of this aspects right so it could happen that the main exchange infrastructure gets impacted for whatever reason cyber security could be one of those but not probably the only one right so they have doing this test to make sure if something goes wrong some system uh, kind of stops working they have an alternate one so that the market doesn't go down stop working for the entire day right so that's the kind of uh stuff uh, which is being done to make sure there is a continuity if there is a disaster and again like i said it's not about cyber security it's about making sure in any kind of unexpected situation you are prepared right so yeah so these are various risk mitigation aspects right uh if i so what's okay so so at this stage i think i try to cover at a high level right what what kind of defense you should have what kind of attacks might happen what are the potential mitigation you need 
right? Now to do all of that, right? So there a lot of organizations have been doing this for some time now, right? So they have created some best practices, right? So that you don't need to start from scratch, right? So if I'm a new organization today, I don't need to rebuild or reinvent that, right? So I have something. So there are certain frameworks which are available and some companies are using these frameworks to build their processes. Some are actually using the framework to build the systems as well, which means a lot of new companies are coming up today who are building security uh, tools and systems, right? So they are also trying to align to this framework. So so I give you a few names here, right? So how the companies are trying to do, right? So there's something called as attack framework. So this is typically like a defense, typical uh, actual ground defense being used by military, right? So there are tactics and techniques and common knowledge which is available. And there's a kind of 14 tactics which people have or they're uh, defined. It's, it's kind of a rule book and you can kind of pick and choose from that. So that's called a Mitre attack. Mitre is the company that has made that. Okay, so that's one example. The other one is a zero trust. So this is more like uh, don't trust anyone. Always make sure you verify. So which means that let's say we get into this Zoom link, right? So Zoom link, or if you get into a kind of a banking system, so they always ask for a password, right? So they'll always make sure you're not the one which is uh, allowed, right? So they'll always verify, and uh, so. For example, some applications we want to connect to the Microsoft uh, Cloud, right? So they will make sure there's a white. So there's a concept of whitelisting and blacklisting, right? So blacklisting is where you say these applications cannot access my system. But today the focus is more on whitelisting, which is like only these can access, rest all cannot, right? In the past it was okay, everybody can accept access except let's say one, two, three, four. But that's changing now because of uh, the nature of the the risk that is coming in the market. Right. Then the other one is a governance framework, which is more about government driven, more local as well. Right. Some countries demand some specific governance. India may have something, something maybe in Singapore. So all that needs to be followed. Right. But there is a governance mechanism. Then the last one is around data. So there are certain data regulation published by European Union, which needs to be followed. And then you have to build your systems and you have to kind of report on that, that yes, I'm capable of ensuring this. And then you will be audited by external agency. So all that is happening. But the benefit of all this is it brings some kind of collaboration and cohesivity in terms of what you should do, what others are doing. There's a learning being coming in, and that allows you to kind of uh, adopt quickly to these some of these models, right? So, yeah. So I think uh, so. This on the security framework part. Uh, so here are some marks. So again, this could be interesting for for those who probably want to know a bit more about the space, right? So these are some of the companies, right, which are kind of cutting edge. Uh, in the space, right? And some of them are quite new, right? So they are recently come up in the last 10, 15 years, right? So the likes of Microsoft, we all know they exist for a long time, but they also evolved a lot in the security space in the last 15 years. Similarly, you have Cisco, right? So they, they again, there are different levels I talked about, right? Defense. So if you look at Zscale or Akamai, they are more on the internet security, cloud security, right? If you talk about Cisco, it is more about the network security, right? If you talk about CyberArk and Okta, this is more about access management. So these are different. Proofpoint, for example, is an email protection tool, right? So these are the tool systems used by different organizations today, right? Which will enable them to measure and react based on any findings. And some of these could be upfront. Some of these could be in case you get into a situation, compromise scenario, you can trace back some of the information and kind of uh, take other actions, right? So these are, again, some interesting names. Why I bring it here is just to make you aware that these are a lot happening in the space, right? And uh, and then if you kind of Google one of those, you can learn as well about this space, like cybersecurity, and you can deep dive into some of the specific areas. So now key challenges and opportunities. So this is the last slide. So I've talked a lot, right? So I just want to give some time for Q&A. Uh, so in terms of key challenges, right? So the first one is, like I mentioned earlier, Attackers can outsmart. They're also uh, constantly on the edge looking out for new stuff. The second one is uh, board level representation. So this is something which is quite new in the sense cybersecurity is evolving as a space, right? So the, the understanding of especially the old organizations, right, that they, they don't see the value, right, or they can't visualize it upfront. So there's, there's a need to, so there's a new role which has come up in the organization, which is called a CISO, right, cybersecurity. Uh, CIO, like you have chief uh, uh, information officer, you have chief security information officer, right? So that's uh, 
so that person will uh, kind of represent in the board and then the other thing is it's not obvious like it's like an insurance premium right so sometimes it's hard to justify why you need to put money on this when nothing has happened so far right but once it happens everybody realizes and that's what is happening now so there's more and more money being put in upfront investment coming in to enable this space okay the third one is uh you know some issues in your organization you know something is not right i am exposed there is a risk there is it's, it's a this term called as attack surface which means what are the areas where i can be attacked by an organization as a external uh, party right so i know them but i am not able to fix them either i don't know or i don't have money or i don't have time right so those those are the things where you know but sometimes you can't take any actions or on time that that's important you have to take action on time the other one is there is a misconception that i know what's the security risk what's my exposure right and i become complacent because of that as an organization leader right which is where it's important that you constantly review your exposure maybe today you are good but 3 months down the line something has changed so it's a continuous process you have to keep a mind on the next one is people dependency or the manual activity right there's a lot of data happening right so that data can be actually uh, you can do telemetry on that you can do some massaging and in create insights which can help you figure out what's happening by like cassette correlation and something is happening in x maybe it can happen to y or something is happening in the external world which is relevant to me i can use find those uh, patterns in my data and then act on it in the last one right it'll be very interesting for you guys so because this is a space very new the skill set is quite limited so there's a lack of skilled resources here right so if you look at the organizations right they're running short of resources right on this space and that's the other reason they are not able to take some of the actions right like point number 3 right and then uh, the other thing is it's also fast evolving so you put a resource in an area and then probably he has a certain skill you need to reskill because something else has come up a better product has come up so all that is something which probably excite you because there is definitely i see an opportunity there for you to look forward as a career right but again a lot to be done because i think uh, as it's a new space it has a lot of learning uh, ground up as well even at organization level they are still trying to find the right set of resources right so i think that's all i have uh, and at this moment i'll open it up for q and a and the uh, cloud user is possible to provide any security constraints uh, in the resources available in the cloud yeah yeah so so if you are a cloud user right so if you look at the big clouds right google microsoft amazon they themselves have their own security uh, infrastructure right so they also have their security tools so as a user you can leverage those tools and uh, so sometimes you have to subscribe to it sometimes it will come along with whatever uh, you are buying right like you buy a server or you buy a service it automatically comes in the back end along with it uh, apart from the uh, security uh, the other external things is possible to include sir sorry come again i think i lost your voice uh, actually the user if they want apart from the service provider security measures mm-hmm. uh, is it possible to include any external security uh, components in the cloud sir yeah 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 so you can include so i gave a example of zscaler there right so what happens is when you are when you're connecting from your organization into a cloud right you can put a additional uh, zscaler hop in between which will provide you some insights similarly you can put firewalls right so in the so what happens is when you connect in through an api for example into aws for example right you can put use their firewalls or you can put your own firewalls which is a cisco or a fortinet or uh, palo alto so you can put your own rules which will be on top of what uh, the cloud provider is providing so that gives you an additional level of security sandeep sir ah i'm saying a nice presentation Uh, this is Dr. Rama, Principal RMP College in Technology. Hi, uh, uh, AI concept uh, can be embedded with the cyber security. Sorry, I, I, the voice broke. So you said AI? Uh, how the AI concept 
uh, AI is embedded with uh, cyber security. Ah, okay, okay. So, okay. So the first thing I'll say, how AI can help cyber security, right? So, so what is happening is uh, typically there's, if you look at networks or where there are a lot of logs, right, in the back end, a lot of information being can- uh, captured. For example, when we are having this call, right? In fact, somewhere at the back end, Zoom is capturing a lot of logs, whatever we are talking about, some of those activities, right? So these logs, now very difficult to read through these logs manually, right? So what you can do is you can put an AI engine. So you can actually move all these logs into data lake, right? A data warehouse. And on top of it, you can put an AI engine, which can create some insights patterns. And based on that, you can upfront figure out if there is a potential threat you have, right? And accordingly, you take an action. Or alternately, if something has already happened, you can go back and see what is my exposure based on that data. So that's something where AI is helping cybersecurity. Now, other way around also works because these AI tools like chatbot and all, right? Eventually, again, they are capturing data from the network. So you need to make sure that this to and fro of data is secure through whatever channels we have, right? The firewalls or the network uh, security layers and all. So yeah, I hope I, does it, does it answer my question? Answer your question? Uh, what are the main security concerns that arise with the external adoption of augmented reality and virtual reality? Okay, so probably I'm not deep into those two things, AR and VR, but what I know is, uh, again, it depends on how, how you are leveraging that, right? So because a lot of information is coming again from the cloud or from the internet, right? And that information, like if it gets kind of wrapped in an effective way, right? Then we can make sure that uh, it's there's no breach, right? But uh, otherwise you need to make sure that there is a specific network security layer on top of it, right? So I, I may not be the may not able to answer it uh, completely here because I'm not into the AR VR side of it. Thank you for your wonderful session, Pavan. Next up on Mr. Skarpagam, Assistant Officer in the ADS Department. To give the quota point. Immense hmm. hmm. pleasure to provide the vote of thanks for this technical talk by Abhishek Singhvi. First of all, I thank Mr. Abhishek Singhvi to accept our invitation and provided a vast information about cybersecurity. Next, I thank our uh, management to provide opportunity to organize this event among our students. Next, I thank our respected principal sir uh, to give the permission to organize this technical talk among our students. Then I'll talk about uh, Honorable uh, Dean, sir, to give support to organize this event to our students. Next, I call, I'll thank all uh, department HODs of CET, RK, and RMD uh, engineering colleges to give the support to organize this event as successful. Last but not the least, I thank our staff members faculties from all our group of institutions and also the students participants participants to join in this session. Thank you one and all.
Thank you okay. for the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.